By looking outside my window, you wouldn't know that I have gardening on my mind. Today I'm going to share with you some very unique and unusual things I'm going to plant this year. I hope you stay tuned. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you what I'm working on this year for my garden. Every year it seems like I plant different items, but this year is going to be really unique and I thought I would share with you my ideas. While we have a lot of snow on the ground and it's really cold, who would ever want to think about gardening? Well, this is the time of year we have to really put our thinking caps on and think about what we want to plant this year because in about 28 days I'm going to start planting my items inside the house and then they will be in here about eight weeks and then I'll put them out in the greenhouse. That means we have to order anything that needs to be ordered yet. I'm going to go through a lot of content today and I hope you enjoy the video because I want you to see a different perspective on gardening and very unusual things that I'm going to do. Number one thing that's going to be different this year is I'm donating most of my garden to my grandchildren. I really don't need to garden to have food. As you all know, I have a lot of food on storage. So I'm going to take this year and let my granddaughters work in the garden and let their ideas come alive. But I'm still going to be planting some items and I'll show you what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be focusing on Laura Ingalls Wilder and what things they were growing on their prairie. Now, I'm in eastern Pennsylvania, so a lot of the things I won't be able to plant. But things like forget-me-nots and flowers like that, I'm going to be planting. I'm going to be planting a lot of flowers this year and a lot of very unusual medicinal herbs. We're going to be studying on the Victory Garden. So the Victory Garden is something I'm really working on and a kitchen garden. I'm going to be having a lot more things planted in containers on my deck. I know a lot of people have requested a lot of information on planting in containers. I'm going to be doing a lot of container gardening this year to help people who can't garden and run a big rototiller and things like that. Also really changing with my composting. I'm going to be having a no-till garden. Now part of my garden is going to be no-tilled. That's where I plant my 50 tomato plants. Yes, 50 tomato plants. I know that's a lot of tomato plants, but I can a lot of tomatoes. So kitchen gardening is going to be something that's going to be highlighted this year. Kitchen gardening in containers. We're going to have the old staples. We're going to have the old things like potatoes and carrots, all of those traditional foods that we plant for, but organic planting in pots. So this is my collection of gardening books. Now I know a lot of people like books, but a lot of people who watch my videos don't. So I'm not going to take a long video and sharing with you all of my books, but I'm just holding up some of these for those of you who do enjoy the books and want to know exactly what kind of books that I like to read and research on. Another book that I got at the thrift store that is so, so charming, and just because you're an adult doesn't mean that you wouldn't find this very fascinating. It is Roots, Shoots, Buckets, and Boots, and this is what I'm going to be working on. We're going to be making a sunflower teepee. We're going to be making all kinds of things, and I love the way it's written. It's so charming. I'm very much these days for visualness. I like the visual look of things being charming, being old world. I love visualness. So even when I'm canning, I'm starting to make old-fashioned labels. I'm starting to make things with canning jars that make things look really pretty. I'm all about detail this year. My whole life, I never was about detail. I just wanted to get the job done and as quick as I could get it done, the best. But since I'm older, I really like detail. I like having things just put in its special place, and I like things being less cluttered. Now, I do have a lot of items, but as you're going to see, I don't have as many clutteredness as I used to. Everything has a purpose, and everything has something that I enjoy about it, or I don't have it. Raised beds. We're also going to work on raised beds. My daughter is going to be starting a raised bed garden. I'm going to take you along into her little homestead where she has chickens and a garden. Now she has a very large house and so I'm going to be sharing with you her raised beds and how she's going to be learning to garden this year. Really excited about that. I'm going to take my camera to other places instead of just my own little homestead. 
We're going to talk more about Beatrice Potter. Last year, I did a whole series on Beatrice Potter. And if you haven't seen it, please look at the end of this video or right above here. I always have eye cards. I think on certain devices, you can't see it. But Beatrice Potter. I love it. Absolutely love her gardens. I'll share with you something really special for me. This is the first time. I think that they are doing this. And my friend Judy told me about it and immediately I went and ordered it. This was an extravagant gift for myself. I paid $35 for these packs of seeds. Yes, that was a lot of money. It was an extremely large amount of money. But this is from Tasha Tudor's Garden. Tasha Tudor Garden Seeds. Yup. Half of these are sold out already. I'm going to share with you in the description box of their website because there's a few left. But this is what they look like. To have seeds from Tasha Tudor's Garden is a dream that came true for me. I have always wanted her garden seeds and living in Vermont, I can't travel to there. But look at this. Absolutely darling. And of course, I'm going to save the packets. I'm going to make copies of these packets for my own home use. But Tasha Tudor's Garden from her family. So we have Columbine, which is a flower, which is kind of hard to germinate. But I have done it before, so I'm going to be working on that. These take top priority. Sweet Sicily, another one that I cannot wait to try. Foxglove is another one that can be uh, kind of tricky. Forget-me-nots are really easy to grow. So there you go. Tasha Tudor seeds. Look in my description box below because they are being sold out quickly. And no, I don't get anything for recommending those seeds. I wish I did. I wish I got some free seeds. But there, isn't this so charming? Those of you who aren't into Tasha Tudor or Tasha Tudor's lifestyle would not understand, but those of you who do, you understand it. So the first thing I'm going to be getting is the opal basil. The opal basil is a dark purple basil. I want that so I can dehydrate them and have the color of that. That is something I've planted before. That is something I can find anywhere else, so I'm not going to show you in the book if they don't have it. Calendula, I'm also going to be planting calendula. As you know, I use that for all of my salves and my lotion. Calendula is like in the marigold family, except for it's a bigger head, and the calendula is beautiful, and it's great to preserve the leaves because you can make all kinds of things with it. Tansy is another thing. I do have tansy, but I do want to have the yellow tansy because that you can, you can dry that dehydrate it, and you can also use it for medicinal reasons. I'm going to be planting the strawberry popcorn. Now, I can't plant that in my garden because I have deer. And we are going to be working on something to get rid of the, the deer. Last year, it was really bad. The first year we lived here, we didn't have any. But towards the end, they started realizing that Homestead Tessie is somebody who's planting a lot of things, and they love it, love it too much. But I'm going to be working on my garden and working on a way that we're going to get rid of the deer. And it's going to be a way that they won't come in without having a fence because fences are really expensive. It's going to call for some fishing wire. <laughs> so that'll be exciting. But the popcorn, the strawberry popcorn, they look like little strawberries. And I can plant it in a container garden up here on the deck. So we're really excited to be doing that, my granddaughters and I. Now I'm going to show you two things that I'm going to be planting that are different. So we're going to go page 61. Those of you who have this catalog. The catalog is free. So if you don't have the catalog, all you have to do is go to www.rareseeds.com and you can get the catalog for free. I'm going to get the chocolate daisy. So the chocolate daisy is just what it says. It is a flower, it is a daisy, but the leaves smell like chocolate. This is just something that's going to be unusual for my garden. I don't think it has any kind of medicinal values or you can't eat it or anything like that. But I'm all into fragrance and papori and all kinds of things. So the chocolate daisy is one of the items that I'm really excited about. And then the other item I'm really excited about is on page 102.
The other item I'm really excited about is edible and it is a flower. And once again, we are in the same thing because we're going with the black pansy. Now pansy leaves are edible and it's said about making raspberry flavored black pansy syrup. I'm really excited about this because I'm excited about dehydrating the leaves. They're going to be black and it's going to give coloring to things like my blueberries and my blackberries. Jam, I'm going to be using it in my jelly. That's another thing I'm really excited about and I hope they have it. Two items are exclusive to Baker Creek. You can get the catalog for free. It's charming to look at even if you don't order any seeds. They have recipes. It's just simply beautiful. As you know, I have all kinds of really unusual items in my garden like St. John's wort, safflower, salad blends. I have all kinds of unusual things and that is what I'm all about. They also offer free shipping. Free shipping on their seeds. That is all of the time and there is no limit. Nice because you can't find that nowadays. I'm going to be using the garden plan book. This comes from Melissa, Melissa Norris, which has a channel, and I'm really excited about that because I love her graphics, and I love the book, so we're going to be working with that. I did print this out. It did cost me some money, but I really am enjoying it, and once I had it paid for, I can print it out every year. It's mine to do whatever I wish with it. So the garden journal is just what it says, but I love the graphics of it because you, you know what it looks like. It looks... I hate to say the word all the time, but it looks old fashioned, but I'm going to be working on this. This is going to be everything that I ever needed to be able to plot out my garden. I'm going to do that here once the snow melts and I can get a visual, but I just wanted to share that with you all. I will share in the link below the Etsy, the Etsy link to this, to the person who has this that you can print it out as well. It is about six dollars I think it wasn't all that cheap but it was yours for life I spend very little money on items but this year I strategically spent money on certain things that I knew that was going to give me a lifetime of happiness because the garden seeds I can replant them I can save them I can share them and it's gonna be a lot of fun having a little bit of Tasha Tudor garden in my own garden one of the things I got, and I'm slightly disappointed in it, but the Elliott Homestead had a link about buying this to put seeds in. I love it, but it won't shut. It will not close. I don't know if I have a defective item. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. Maybe you can let me know, but it will not close. So, but the idea of it is amazing. You have little compartments where you can put your garden seeds in. Now, I got lots of garden seeds so I couldn't put them all in these compartments but what I'm planting this year I already have out I have my herbs I have my spinach I have my beets so I think it's really nice to have it I'm not sure why it doesn't close when I bought it it was taped but it came from eBay it, it came from Amazon and it was brand new if somebody has this can you tell me how you close it because maybe it's something simple I don't know it will not close I don't see any way to make it close. <laughs> so there you go, everyone. We're going to be working on edible flowers. That's the main part of my channel as far as with gardening. Also, Colonial Williamsburg. I have a lot of plants. Last year, I'm going to be really reamping that up and making more with Colonial flowers and Colonial herbs. One other expensive item I bought last year was the vegetable garden was the vegetable garden from Williamsburg Virginia this book is out of print and it's very hard to find and I'm sure it's even more expensive than the twenty dollars that I paid for last year which is high for me high price but Thomas Jefferson I'm very interested in Thomas Jefferson and what he grows and I'm going to make my own garden just like that those of you who have garden fever like me, if you would like to see my playlist of last year, it's so beautiful, all of the herbs and my Peter Rabbit garden, I'm going to share with that at the end of this video because I'm going to have the same type garden but even better this year. Take care everyone, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye everybody!